Welcome to the Registers Report. My name is John Buckley. I'm the Register of Deeds for Plymouth County. This show is about Plymouth County real estate. We're reporting on the numbers. Uh, although this tape show is being taped in August, we're reporting on the July numbers. So let's go to the numbers. You're going to see some bar charts as we go forward. First, you're going to see a bar chart of sales of property. Uh, in July, there were one 1,055 deeds recorded, less than the 1,107 in June, less than the 1,130 last year, down 8% for the first seven months of the year. Uh, there's a shortage of inventory out there, as we all know and have talked about in the past, uh, clearly affecting what is uh, the numbers that are in the marketplace. But there are a lot of sales going on. So you'll see a listing of sales throughout Plymouth County for July. Um, and the largest number of sales for July was the town of Plymouth, Brockton being second. But every single community had real estate activity. Uh, clearly, um, it's a good time to both buy and sell. Uh, the number of mortgages had a big burst over the last couple months because people are refinancing. There was, it was 2,212 mortgages recorded in July, more than the 2,062 in June, up 23% over last July. That shows you how many people are taking advantage of low interest rates. And for the first seven months of the year, up 3% over last year. You're going to see a bar chart for foreclosure deeds. We have followed the foreclosure deeds and notices uh, issue since the crisis of 2008, and they're very low, thankfully. Only 31 foreclosure deeds in all of Plymouth County in July, more than the 29 in June, 60% less than last July. And then you're going to see a bar chart for foreclosure notices. Notice is are what people receive in the mail, letting them know they're in trouble. There were only 46 foreclosure notices countywide in July, less than the 66 in June, 18% less than last July, and 25% lower. And you're going to see now a listing of foreclosure deeds and sales for each community in Plymouth County. Brockton has been the community most beset by foreclosure deeds. But every community at one point has been affected by orders of notice and foreclosure deeds. If you find yourself in trouble, don't wait. Reach out as fast as you can to a federal housing counselor, because the faster you act, you may save yourself uh, your home uh, and be able to do some kind of a modification. Uh, again, federal housing councils do that for nothing. Just don't wait. Um, our training room, which we run every month, free online training how to, with a hands-on training at the, our office in Plymouth, is Thursday, September 5th at 9 o'clock. We have eight seats with eight computers and hands-on. So if you're interested, call in advance. It's a great opportunity for anyone that's doing genealogical search, your family history, or anyone that's in the real estate business. Um, we will soon be releasing our first phase of transcriptions, which is a thing that we're really working very closely on, beginning in 1686, the founding of Plymouth County, because a lot of people now have no idea how to read cursive writing, particularly that beautiful writing from the early quill pens. I have a great guest in the next segment, Steve Amico, Vice President of Lending, the Coastal Heritage Bank, talking about the mortgage market, and in particular, the ability to refinance your current mortgage. We'll see you in the next segment. Welcome back to the Register Report. My name is John Buckley. I'm the Register of Deeds of Plymouth County. This segment of the show, we always do something educational in nature. We've had many people involved in the real estate community, from surveyors, assessors, commercial real estate brokers, a whole bunch of realtors 
and I have a great lender with me t today who's been a guest before, Steve Amico, Vice President of Coastal Heritage Bank. Welcome back, Steve. Thanks, John. Thanks always, for having me. Always great to have you. Yeah, I appreciate that. I always uh, say call. when people come on the show, it's good to have a loquacious <laughs> guest because they, they really take it over and talk about what they what we need to hear. You know? You have to have a passion for it. <laughs> yeah, right, right. So why don't we start by sharing with your viewers a little bit about how you got into this real estate mortgage business. Sure. Um, well, I started off as a collector many years ago and uh, just moved into the lending field and um, you know, have been in residential lending now for 30 years. Um, started with Coastal Heritage Bank. Actually, we started with Situate Federal Savings Bank 23 years ago, and we kind of morphed into Coastal Heritage Bank. What office was that? I s actually was working out of the Marshfield office oh, sure. at okay. the time, uh, right down by the high school. Yep. And Coastal Heritage Bank came about by the merger of Situate Federal and S Bank, mm -hmm. and that's where Coastal Heritage was formed, and that was back in 2015, uh, December 7th, actually, 2015. And then we most recently just had another merger with Equitable Bank, and uh, we've increased our offices now to 15 offices. Uh, two on the North Shore, uh, one, two, I think there's five in Norfolk County, and uh, seven in Plymouth County. So you crossed the Great Divide, we always say. We did. In North Shore, people go north, yep. and this, everyone on the south side of Boston down the, this way, come this way. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we have two great offices, one in Lynn and one in Nahant. And, okay. I, and I'll tell you, the Nahant office is, is spectacular, what views it has. Um, you go into the lobby, you turn around, you look out the window, and you see nothing but Revere Beach and the, in the oh. harbor. It's, it's beautiful, yeah, just nice, absolutely nice. spectacular. Yeah, uh, yep. When I went, to, I went to college up at Tufts, which is kind of up in that north, yep. across the Great Divide, and uh, <laughs> we always went... In, in, when we're in the middle of football season, we get a couple of days off. We'd always go up to Revere Beach and yep. up, up that direction. You know? Yeah, beautiful area, beautiful yeah, yeah. area. So let's talk a, a little bit about uh, your current situation. Sure. You're located in which branch of Coastal Heritage Bank? Yep, I'm in the Hanover office, which is uh, right by Target in, uh, on Route 53 in Hanover. Um, but we also have, like I said, we have several offices all over the place. We go from Kingston all the way to Nahant and in between, Quincy and Weymouth, um, Hanover, Marshfield. Uh, but I am personally in the Hanover office right now. If anyone's looking to get a hold of me, you can reach me at uh, my office, which is 781-796-6125, or my cell phone, which is 617-529-8444. So currently in our market, um, the purchase mortgage, mm. mortgages, which are when people use a mortgage to buy a home, which most Correct. people do, um, is still going along. Mm -hmm. But the refinance market has really been boosted over the last number of months. You want right. to talk a little bit about that? Sure. Well, when we started this year out, you know, we were all anticipating that it was going to be a, re, uh, a purchase market because the rates were a little bit higher. Um, and we started off where it was 75-25. So 75% 75 of our business was purchase money and 25% of our business was refinance money. It has actually turned around dramatically where 61% of our business now is refinance money and 39% is purchase money. Um, most of that's due to the interest rates dropping to the four-year low at 3.5%. Yeah, we saw when the Federal Reserve bumped interest rates a little bit through some of their decisions last year, uh, the refinance market slowed down, mm -hmm. and we know from our numbers these months recently that the number of mortgages have gone way up over the number of sales. Right. That tells us a lot of people are refinancing. Yeah, we've, um, we've seen, it, it's, we're, it's coming in in records right now. I have um, three originators that work with me, uh, myself and two others, and um, each and every one of us has between 25 and 30 loans that we're working on at any given time right now. So, I mean, we're up to, I think it was 82 
loans in that pipeline right wow. now, which wow. is tremendous, yeah. you know? Um, and like I said, 61% of those are, are refinances. So when a client calls you, mm -hmm. a former client, a new client, and they say, look, I'm looking to take advantage of low interest rates and save myself some money or right. use it for a good purpose, how do you get them started? Well, there's a couple of ways that they can get started. They can uh, meet with us in person. Um, we can do a phone application, uh, which is popular now. And they can also go on to the, on, line to our website, which is uh, www.coastalheritagebank.com, and you can apply online that way. Um, but there's a couple of questions that I like to ask them first. You know, are they taking cash out? Are they, um, are they including a second mortgage with it or a home equity line of credit? Are they paying off credit card debts? Or are they just financing the amount of money that they owe on their first mortgage because it really it makes a difference on the interest rates. Um, if you're just refinancing the balance on your first mortgage, you're going to have one interest rate. If you're taking cash out or refinancing a home equity line, that's considered cash out by the GSEs and they um, GSEs, G the uh, Freddie Mac, Fannie okay. Mae, yeah. the government security right. agency, you know, the government agencies. They back up all the mortgages. They yeah, they back the mortgages up. So you know banks and mortgage companies have to sell to them. We, we retain all the servicing, but you know sometimes we do sell some of the mortgages. So we have to kind of abide by their rules and regulations, and it's actually a quarter of a percent higher on an interest rate if you're taking money out or paying off a second mortgage. Okay, so somebody gives you a call, how, do, how does it get started from paperwork and or they do decide that it's the time for them to go forward? Yep, well, we, we'll talk to them, find out what their numbers are, you know, what their rate is currently, mm -hmm. and kind of decide whether it's kind of beneficial mm -hmm. for them to do it. Um, and then we go through the list of documents that they need to provide us, a couple months bank statements, um, two years uh, W-2s, and sometimes two years tax returns, months worth of pay stubs, um, information on their existing mortgages, information on their real estate tax bill and a copy of their homeowner's insurance policy. And if they can find their deed, we do ask them for the deed sure. as well, just so we know, you know what the book and page is and mm -hmm. we have all that information. Mm -hmm. Then what we do is we'll sit down with them and do the application and start the process. Um, part of the process is, is they're gonna get information from us, a loan estimate and an intent to proceed. We can't do anything um, until we have that loan estimate and intent to proceed signed. And then what we do is we move forward with the appraisal and uh, underwriting thereafter. So, so early on in the process, in order to decide on their side mm -hmm. whether it's the right thing to do, they ask you what are the costs of right. refinancing. You want to go through that? Yep, so we, so we go through all the closing costs with them and we make sure that you know, the rule of thumb on refinancing is that you're saving at least three quarters of a percent. If you're not saving three quarters of a percent, it may not be beneficial for you to do it. Based upon the fees involved. Based upon the fees and the number of years that it would make to okay. take to make up. And there's also another thing you have to look at. Do you, are you going back to another 30-year mortgage or are you cutting your mortgage rate, you know, you mortgage down. For instance, um, customer that I have right now who has a 30-year fixed rate mortgage, they're one year into their mortgage and they're refinancing their mortgage right now. It's only gonna cost them $10 more a month to switch that to a 25-year mortgage. And you say, well, why would they wanna do that? It's, a, it, they, you know, they're cutting out four years. Well, surprisingly enough, by cutting out four years, they're saving themselves $70,000 wow. in interest wow. just for four years. Sure. And it's costing them $10. Right. And, you know, it's, so it's, it's part of do you want to save today or do you want to save mm -hmm. forever? You know, and if you're saving today, you can go back to a 30-year fixed rate mortgage. You'll save $100 a month. Mm -hmm. But to save overall you cut that mortgage down to a 25-year or a 20-year mortgage, and you end up saving a lot of interest in the long run. So before we move on to the next part of my questioning, why don't you share your contact information sure. with our viewers? Sure. It's uh, Steve Amico, Coastal Heritage Bank. 
I'm in the Hanover office. My telephone number, direct line, is 781-796-6125. My cell phone is 617-529-8444. And my email address is samico at coastalheritagebank.com. So let's talk a little bit about purchase mortgages. Uh, somebody's looking around, beginning the process to buy a home. How, do you, how does that get started with you? Well, what we do is we'll, uh, people, most people are now are pre-approved. Um, they have to be pre-approved for the lenders, by, you know, the for the, lender. for the, for, by the lenders so that a, 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 uh, the real estate broker can show them the home. Um, what we'll do is once we get the purchase and sales agreement, that's when we can really start everything on the roll. Um, their rates are always, purchase money rates are always going to be um, the lower of the rates. Um, depending upon whether they need PMI, which is private mortgage insurance. And that, that did require if they were putting anything less than 20% down. Um, PMI insurance used to be very expensive. It's actually come down quite a bit now. It's, it's very reasonable, you know, if someone does not have enough money to put down um, to make the 20%. But we'll sit there and go through everything, make sure that they qualify, because sometimes when they do a pre-approval, they just do a quick pre-approval and, you know, don't get all the information. So we want to make sure that we get all the information um, and that they're qualified for that particular mortgage and for the amount of money that they're looking to uh, borrow. And then they get a letter? From you the They'll people? get a commitment letter from us that says that they're all approved. And in the meantime, it's already sent off to an attorney so that the attorney can do the 50-year title search on the property um, and make sure that the municipal lien certificates are all up to date. Um, they do a plot plan on that. Um, closing costs range anywhere, depending upon the amount of money that you're looking to borrow, anywhere from $2,600 to $3,800 in that range. And the biggest part of all of that is the uh, lender's coverage title insurance, which is required on all loans. So back on the refinancing aspect, sometimes because the title is already been done, because it's a refinance mm -hmm. by, by an attorney, you'd assign it to there are lesser costs involved? Yeah, if, if they refinance with the same bank that they're, that they have their current mortgage with, normally we would send it back to the same attorney. Mm -hmm. So they really only have to go back. They've already done the 50-year right. title search, so they really only have to go back to the mortgage that they recorded. So the fees are of, uh, a lot less. So, you know, for instance, the attorney fee on a purchase uh, would be $700. The, the attorney fee on a refinance with the same lending institution would be $525. So I know you're a big supporter of buyer education. Absolutely. You want to talk a little bit about that? Sure. Um, we have uh, we we actually partnered with uh, NeighborWorks um, Solutions, and we're doing a home buyer seminar in August um, at the Mass Light down at Union Point, and um, we have that coming up on the 24th of August, and. Um, it's more of an education for first-time home buyers so that they can get their certificate. It's a fabulous program. It's four hours of classroom and four hours of online, and um, they have some dynamic people doing it, um, which is fabulous. They have a realtor. They have an attorney that comes in. Um, they have the people from NeighborWorks that explain um, all the FHA programs. They'll have a banker such as myself that will explain the mortgage process to them. Yeah. Somebody in, in my um, experience, we call it the Lamas of, yeah. <laughs> of, of, of mortgaging. Yep. <laughs> you need to know what you're getting yourself into. And, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, there's so many programs out there that require it now. You know, they've got the mass housing right. program that requires right. it. You've got the mass housing partnership program, which is different than mass housing itself. And they require that. And I, I believe it's a chapter approved um, program. So before we talk about going forward, let's talk a little bit about first-time home buyers mm -hmm. because that's a challenging group. It is. There's um, first-time home buyers are having a little bit of an issue right now in finding properties um, right. because T very tight inventory. Yeah, people aren't people aren't selling their houses right now, um, which they might be 
because if the rates stay low, that might, that might change. But um, we have a wonderful first time home buyer program that we give people a choice. They can either take a quarter of a percent off the interest rate. So in today's market, you're looking at 3.625 for an interest rate. You take a quarter of a percent off that interest rate, that's 3.375. And, and they have some reduced closing costs as well. Um, we, our program doesn't require they go through a chapter approved uh, program. We do have an online program with our PMI company, the private mortgage company, Genworth, that we can set them up with to so, do that. So let's talk a little bit. We're, right now, this show is being taped in August. We'll soon be into fall, mm -hmm. maybe not officially, but... Once kids are back in school, it seems like fall. What do you see the market doing in September as we lead up to the end of the calendar year? Well, I, I think it's going to stay in a refinance market. I think, I, I think that um, the Feds, um, which will meet again in September, uh, and then again in December, they have been um, kind of kicking it around that they were going to reduce the discount rate again, which may or may not affect the uh, mortgage rates. But I think that we're going to see we're going to start to see a little bit of um, a little more of a change coming in November, maybe going back to the purchase market in November, December, when the school break is coming along and okay. you know people are getting right back to. And do you budget out or? You are uh, past uh, the beginning of January 2020? Yeah, you, uh, you, you start doing the budgeting, usually comes around September, okay. and you kind of try to predict. And, you know, we predicted that it was going to be a purchase market. Right. And, you know, we're still going to hit our goal on the number of mortgages and things like that, but we may or may not hit our goal for the number of purchases because, um, you know, we planned it to be a purchase market, which right. it started off right. to be, and now it's, it's becoming a refinance market now. And, and clearly for a number of years now, the inventory has been so low, right. it's been hard for people to find housing because people aren't making their move. I saw an article the other day that people are staying there in their existing homes longer. Right, and and they are because with the low rates that are that they have out there, they're refinancing now, and there's yeah. really no need for them to right. move. Um, you know, you can buy. Uh, I use myself for example. I mean, I'm in a house that a three bedroom house. It's just myself and my wife now, where that could have children in it, and mm -hmm. you know, have have a pool in the backyard sure. and so on and so forth. But I'm not going to move because it's going to cost me more money to move into something smaller than it is. And you like where you are. And I like where I am. Yeah. So can you, know? you share your contact information one more time? Sure, absolutely. It's Steve Amico, Coastal Heritage Bank. My direct line is 781-796-6125. My cell phone is 617-529-8444. And my email address is samico at coastalheritagebank.com. And come on and visit us in any one of our offices um, from Kingston all the way up to Nahant now. Well, as always, Steve, great job. Thanks, John. Appreciate okay, nice it. Nice to see you. Nice yeah. to see you as well. So welcome back to the Registers Report. Again, my name is John Buckley. I'm the Register of Deeds for Plymouth County. I want to thank Steve Amico for the great job he did in describing the mortgage process, and in particular, the ability to refinance your current mortgage and save yourself a lot of money. In this segment of the show, we get into things a little lighter in nature. Some of our great Plymouth County and Plymouth Colony history. We're coming up pretty close to the beginning of 2020, and there'll be a lot happening in this area uh, and throughout Plymouth County and Plymouth Colony. Uh, holidays for the month of August, the 7th National Lighthouse Day, the 12th World Elephant Day, the 16th National Roller Coaster Day, and we'll get back to that, the 26th Women's Equality Day. And the first notable land record you're going to see from our collection is Shirtlift Park. Shirtlift Park is in Carver. It's a great place uh, pine, under pine trees that they run every year, Carver's Old Home Day. Um, it was land donated to the town of Carver in the early 1900s by Carlton Shirtliff Francis and basically is used for picnicking, 
fears, band concerts, and memorably Carver Old Home Day. The first Old Home Day was celebrated in 1901. Uh, there's some really nice things within the park, but if you ever have a chance to go and share some of the real um, uh, clams and uh, sausage and things that they uh, put together for that celebration, it's a great opportunity. It's in late July, so it just occurred. And again, um, the Carver Historical Commission promoted this and loved their Carver history. Next, you're going to see a remnant from the past, Paragon Park. We talked about National Roller Coaster Month. It was home to the world's tallest roller coaster and the famous Paragon Park Carousel. It was located on Howells near Tasket Beach, opened in 1905 and operated for many years by the Stone family. People remember that have gone to it, the Congo Cruise, the Wild Mouse, the, and the Giant Coaster. It was visited by families for generations, and it was closed in 1984 and turned in, into condominiums. However, the Friends of the Paragon Carousel have kept the carousel running. The Paragon Carousel is located on the National Register of Historic Places, a great place to visit, and one of the last vestiges of Paragon Park and a reminder of the golden age of the town of Hull. Next, you're going to see another one of our notable records, a well-known place, Duxbury Beach. Duxbury Beach is a beautiful white sand beach six-mile-long barrier beach owned by the Duxbury Beach Reservation. Uh, it's a natural shaping resource that moves with the tides. Access to the beach is achieved by either traveling over Powder Point Bridge, uh, the original wooden Powder Point Bridge built in 1892, or over Gurnet Road. It's a beautiful place to visit. It's gone through many ownerships and many potential developers over the years, but it's still um, a wonderful place to go and sit and watch our great Atlantic Ocean come and lap over the beach. And last, you're going to see one of our colonial records. As I mentioned, January is the turn into 2020, an event that everyone has been waiting for. So every month, we promote one of our colony records. And this was a vote of the Plymouth Colony Court in 1639 that established one of the first oyster beds in the area. It was a vote by the Colonial Court for, great, for granting of land to William Vassal to make an oyster uh, bed or bank in the North River. And clearly, anyone that has any of the oysters currently from Plymouth County, it's, they're wonderful, whether it be Duxbury Beach, Island Creek, any of the oysters that you may find from this area. But the Plymouth colonists had it right, and they gave Mr. Vassal the license to run that bank so he would have no competitors, and he could develop that oyster bank um, into something really great for the colony. I want to thank uh, Ben Alexander for putting this show together with me. David Antoine, over the years, have worked with me in getting these shows available to people out there in the community to see what is available. We had Mark McKinley today helping out. And I just want to say thank you for watching this show. We try to tell you a little bit about what for most people is their primary asset. Have a great rest of the summer, and we'll see you next month.